What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. All right, so in today's video, we are finally going to do a capacity test on that 48 volt lithium iron phosphate Husky battery from Big Battery. Before we do that, there's a few things I wanna mention or a few things that I've learned since the last video about the Husky battery. And of course, if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. Basically what I did is took it out of the box, hooked it up to my GrowWatt 12,000 watt split phase inverter, charged it up, and then simulated a rolling blackout and powered my entire house. Since that video, I pretty much just left it hooked up to the inverter and have been powering my house daily and that's been a little over a month and a half and it's been working flawlessly that's a little bit of a lie because it's actually improved a little bit all right so there's two things i want to mention before we get into the capacity test the first thing which i already knew in the last video i just forgot to mention it in the bluetooth app on your phone or your tablet or whatever you're using it'll show a remaining amp hour which is how much is left in the battery whenever you do a full discharge and then recharge cycle it will actually recalibrate to show you how many amp hours you discharge during that last cycle, which is pretty cool. And just FYI, with the settings that I use on my inverter, I typically use around 92.7 amp hours from the battery every day. The second thing I learned about this battery based on my last video, in that video I could only charge to like 56 or 57 volts and I assumed that it was full charge and chalked it up to different voltage readings from the BMS, the LED voltage readout, and my inverter. I was wrong. Well what I found is one or two cells weren't fully balanced or equal with the rest of the cells. Basically what happens is as you're charging this battery up there's 16 cells in there and if they're not perfectly balanced one or two cells might go up just a little bit higher. The BMS has a cutoff setting of 3.65 volts for the cells inside. So as you're charging, one cell just goes slightly above, hits that cutoff, which cuts off the charging of the battery which is a good thing. So since using this battery pretty much every single day, the cells have rebalanced on that top end and I'm now able to fully charge the battery. A quick rundown of this battery from the spec sheet. So this is a 48 volt, 103 amp hour lithium iron phosphate maintenance free battery. Maintenance free means you don't have to really do anything to it. You just charge it up and use it. There's no watering. There's no, there's no nothing. The BMS inside takes care of everything for you. It's got an advanced smart BMS with Bluetooth inside. However, they don't advertise that yet because they don't have their app ready. They don't advertise that it has Bluetooth, but it does. You can discharge at 130 amps continuously, and you can go up to 350 amps for a short time to start those big loads. The recommended charge rate is 45 amps for a longer lifespan. However, the max charge rate is 90 amps, which I have done. I actually went up to like 96 or something like that and it handled it great. Voltage range is 43 volts for the low cutoff side and the charge voltage is 58.8. And that's just a few of the battery specs. So we should get a minimum of 103 amp hours from this battery. Okay, enough of the shenanigans. Let's get on with the battery capacity test. And of course, since I've only got one 48 volt inverter and it's in use, hooked up and powering my house, I'm gonna be using a 48 volt 2700 watt APC UPS for my inverter. And it's gonna be connected to a Victron smart shunt, which is in turn connected to the Husky battery. Now this Victron smart shunt is new to me. I'm not 100% sure if I have all the settings correct, so I'm only going to be using it for a reference. During the video, we're probably not going to go with it for amp hours or anything like that. I just got to figure out how to use it. Okay. Anyway, to discharge the battery, the first discharge test will be with this super old space heater on high, and that's roughly 1500 watts. 
which is about 30 amps from the battery. The second test, I figured I'd try to make a dollar or two using a quickly put together six GPU mining rig with four gigabyte cards mining Ravencoin. If you're not sure what a crypto mining rig is, that's okay because we're just creating a load and that load's gonna be around 600 watts, which is about 15 amps from the battery. And I also went ahead and did this test using three Relic 150 watt light bulbs and one 100 light bulb, which is around 12 amps from the battery. All right, so for my test and results, I pretty much charged the battery to full charge. All cells came into balance as they should with a 10 millivolt delta between the highest and lowest cell. First test, I started with the space heater on high for 1500 watts or 30 amps from the battery. Test lasted around three hours and 15 minutes. Battery hit low cutoff at 43 volts and cell number 16 hit the low cutoff at 2.5 volts and the BMS disconnected the load like it's supposed to do and we ended up with a capacity of 104.07 amp hours. Second test, I pretty much did the exact same thing. Charged battery up to 58 volts. All cells came back into balance again. I connected the Ravencoin mining rig and started mining at a slow 25 mega hash a second. 600 watts or 15 amps from the battery. Made about one dollar and six and a half hours later, the test was over. The ending was pretty much the same with cell 16 hitting the low cutoff of 2.5 volts first and disconnecting the battery at 43 volts and we ended up with a total amp hour of 104.79. The last test was pretty much the same, but used the light bulbs for a total of 12 amps being discharged from the battery. All ended the same as before. However, I ended up with 105.13 amp hours. All right, I'm gonna say I am pretty impressed with all of these tests. I actually did a few more discharge tests with the space heater, one on high and one on low, 30 amp and 25 amp. Both tests were 104.13 like and 47 or something like that. Every single capacity test that I did was over the claimed 103 amp hours, which is fan freaking tastic. It does seem like a lot of the other companies out there, or at least a lot of the videos that I've seen, they'll claim a ridiculous amount of amp hours or capacity out of a battery assuming that nobody's going to check and they fail miserably. It's kind of nice seeing that big battery is right on with their claims. Now I also did a quick teardown and again I'm pretty impressed with how everything was constructed and put together. Everything was nice and tight. There was no loose hardware, you know, no loose nuts or anything like that. After taking off the circuit board and looking around I noticed all the cells have their QR codes intact which is great. I also noticed that each group of four cells are kind of in their own little compartment so whenever you stand up the battery, you don't have the weight of all the cells crushing the lower ones. Each group also has foam padding basically all the way around on all sides to help protect them. So that's nice. Wires were all zip tied together and, you know, pretty much good cable management. I even tried to remove a couple of the cells, but I couldn't get a good enough grip to slide one out. So I just gave up and put it back together. If for some reason you do want to see like a detailed teardown of this video, make sure you put that down in the comment section and I will get on that. A few final thoughts and or suggestions about this battery. The first one is it does now come with the 175 amp Anderson connector six gauge wire with ring terminals right on the end. A few months ago, it didn't come with that, so I complained just a little bit, and they actually listened and included one for every purchase now. That's not only for this battery, but I think it's for every single battery that you order. You get a free cable, so you're welcome. The next suggestion would be if you are getting a Husky battery or really any battery, most companies have to ship out batteries at like 20 or 30%, which is a pretty normal thing. So when you get it, you're obviously going to have to recharge it. So my suggestion is once you charge it up, leave it on the charger for a couple of days. That way all of the batteries inside will be nicely balanced on the very, very top end. That way the next time you go out and use the battery, whether it's, you know, for your house or camping or whatever you use it for your golf cart you'll get the full cycle out of the battery or you can do exactly what I did and hook it up to your inverter charge it up that way and then just use it I cycle it every single day so I bring it 
pretty close to the bottom. I'll come down to 46 volts and then I'll charge it back up to 57.2-ish. As you're recharging it every single day, all the cells will come into balance and you'll get the full use out of it just like I do. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, to be honest, the more I use this and the more I realize, you know, how much you're actually getting, I mean, you really can't beat it. It's a maintenance-free battery. It's lithium iron phosphate, so it's one of the safest battery chemistries out there. Everything is nicely packed into a steel-constructed box. It's got a really nice BMS with Bluetooth. I mean, it's got wheels on it so you can move it around if you need it to. It's got handles so you can lift it up. It's got a voltage display, you know, a power button. Although I am a DIY guy, for what you get inside this little tiny package, I mean, you really can't beat it. I'm just amazed. I have one more thing before you guys go, and that is inverters and batteries and all that kind of stuff. If you're one of those people confused with all the million options out there and websites for inverters and batteries and wires and all of that kind of stuff, and you're really not sure what to get, you're kind of in luck because Big Battery is starting to become kind of like the Ikea of batteries and, and systems. The reason I say that is because I actually had a chance to go out to Big Battery and meet all those people and take a look at all of their stuff, so I did. Do you think I should try to disturb him? I think we should. I got him an a Average Joe shirt. Who the f is that? I'm, I'm kind of lost now. Where do I go? <laughs> That's yours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and pretty much when I got there, they were about to announce a whole bunch of new products. They are finally offering all in one kits. And they've got kits for pretty much everything. They got them for vans, campers, RVs off-grid cabins, homes. I mean, you could pretty much get a kit kind of like what I'm already using. All right, so if you're getting a kit that's pretty much like what I'm using here, you're gonna get the 48 volt lithium iron phosphate Husky battery. It's 103 amp hours. You're gonna get a 6,000 watt grow watt split phase low frequency inverter. It's got the solar charge controller in it. You can hook it up to the grid. You can use it like a UPS. It comes with the 175 amp Anderson connector with the six gauge wire and ring terminals. It even comes with a Wi-Fi dongle so you can control your system from anywhere, anytime. Also comes with the manual and the monitoring software. They even have an upgrade system where you can connect up to four batteries. This kit does come with a combiner box. You can see the bus bars in there. You got four going to the negative, four going to the positive. It's got a little Hall effect sensor here for the front amp and voltmeter. Then everything just connects nicely inside of this box. It's super easy to connect everything. Basically, you're gonna take all the Anderson connectors from the bottom side of this combiner box and plug one into each battery. The other side of the combiner box has a 350 amp connector, which connects to another 350 amp connector which has the ring terminals and that connects straight to the inverter. Boom! You're pretty much done. They actually had this other brand new system. It was called the Kong and this thing was massive. It was a 48 volt 12 kilowatt hour battery. And this one actually has a little screen on it with all the BMS options and it tells you all the cell voltages and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty badass. You guys should definitely check it out. They have a system for everybody. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. I know I've wasted enough of your time. If you guys are interested in the Husky battery or really anything else that Big Battery offers and want to save some cash, you can. Big Battery offered me a discount code that I can pass off to you guys, which is Joe10. As always, it's not required, but always appreciated because I do get a small kickback for that and it allows me to make awesome and helpful videos. Actually, it's only awesome and helpful if you guys and girls like the smash button. Okay, I'm done. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell thingy that's off to the side. And I will see you on the next one. And while I was there, of course, I met every single person I could. They were all super nice and helpful, and they put up with all of my crap. So thank you very much. And all the people in the back that were moving stuff around for me. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Um, um, and then after that, I think we're gonna rip it open and, you know, throw it across the room and see if it breaks. We're not gonna do that because it's like 100 pounds and I don't think I could do that.